Bé, bona tarda a tothom. En nom de la presidenta Teresa Cabré de l'Institut, jo com a secretari general, estic encantat d'obrir aquest acte, aquesta conferència, perquè tenim la sort, que no passa sovint ni molt menys, aquí a la nostra casa de tenir un representant molt rellevant d'una societat científica europea, en aquest cas l'Acadèmia de Sciences de París, de la qual el professor Etienne Guís n'és secretari per Pedro. Per tant, estem molt contents que gràcies a la, sobretot, m'imagino a la l'habilitat de la Marta Sanz que ha organitzat la visita, ens l'ha fet, ens l'ha portat cap aquí aquesta tarda després de la jornada matinal que ha tingut a la Facultat de Matemàtiques. Doncs bé, que aquí ha pogut conèixer la nostra institució, no només simplement la casa, que ja és interessant molt, sinó també la història, hem estat una bona estona conversant amb ell. I bé, arriba el moment que ens presenti la seva conferència. I en aquest sentit, doncs, repetir, dient que nous sommes très honorés de votre séjour ici, dans l'Institut d'Études Catalans. Et bon, maintenant, on va faire votre présentation que le fera Joan Ponti comme vice-président de la Société Catalane de Mathématiques. Joan, on va dire. Moltes gràcies. Bé, per mi és un plaer introduir l'Etien Gis. L'Etien és un matemàtic, jo crec que en majúscules. Si he de definir la seva àrea de treball, bé, és geometria, sistemes dinàmics, però moltes coses, no? I una de les coses més bones que té l'Etien és que es relaciona amb moltes àrees diferents, no? I això sempre en matemàtiques és una qualitat. I, bé, i té un gust, jo crec que des del meu punt de vista, té un gust per les matemàtiques boniques, molt interessant. La tient, ja veureu, és un molt bon orador i ho puc dir tranquil·lament abans de la conferència i sé que no fallarà, perquè és una persona que li interessa molt parlar de matemàtiques. Un dels seus lemes és que les matemàtiques són més boniques quan es comparteixen. I, bé, no és fàcil compartir matemàtiques. Se n'ha de saber i és molt interessant. I quan comparteixes matemàtiques, doncs és una joia pels que ho reben i per la gent que ho comparteix. Llavors, bé, sí, m'he oblidat de dir que és director de recerca a Mèrit, al CNRS, a Mèrit des de fa un any, de l'Escola Normal Superior de Lió, i ara, com ens ha dit l'Àngel, és acadèmic. Però no és acadèmic... Com ho he de dir, això? Supernumerari? No, perdó, numerari... Secretari perpetu. Me n'havia oblidat. Secretari perpetu, que és el jefe de l'Acadèmia de Ciències, no només de Matemàtiques. I ha tingut molts premis i, bé, molts merescuts. Un dels premis més importants potser... Bé, és que la llista és molt llarga. Un és el Premi Clay de divulgació, de dissemination en anglès. Una medalla de la mediació pels mitjans científics, etcètera, etcètera. És una persona que li agrada compartir matemàtiques i, bueno, jo crec que serà un plaer sentir-lo i no m'enrotllo més. Deixo parlar. Ah, i el títol. Bueno, el títol el tenim aquí, eh? La petita història de la pilota de futbol. Moltes gràcies. Thank you for the introduction. I even understood... So what I want to do today is very simple. I want to show you an object, many objects, that all of you know very well, but I suspect that most of you never looked at. Uh, you can ask many people who have played soccer for years and years, and usually they had no attention to the ball. So my purpose today is, first of all, to convince you that the soccer ball should be soccer balls. There are many, many, many different balls. All of them are more or less spherical, but not exactly spherical. And second of all, I want to show you that these balls have a tradition 
They are full of mathematics. So I want to, I will take three examples. There are hundreds of different balls. And today I want to show you three balls. Uh, the one on the left is the traditional ball, which uh, we will discover. It's called Telstar. It was uh, designed in 1970 for the World Cup in Mexico. The one in the middle is my favorite because I love Brazil. It's a Brazilian ball. It's called Brazuca. It's one of the very few democratic uh, uh, events in Brazil. Since has, this name Brazuca has been chosen by uh, public votation. And on the right, you have a less democratic ball since it's the, this is the ball from uh, the last World Cup in Qatar. Its name is Al Hila. So Telstar, Brazuca, Al Hila. Al Hila means the voyage, travel. So I want to show you these balls and show you on some of the mathematical aspects and somehow physical aspects of these balls. First of all, I want to convince you that these balls are kind of complicated. Of course, you know Pelé and Telstar. Telstar was in, invented in 1970. It's called Telstar because it was the first time soccer competitions were filmed on television. So it was the star of the television. And second of all, it was important to have a ball with black and white so you can see it on the television screen. So that's a very fundamental. Now we have colored television screen, but at the time it was black and white. So let me have a look at this, uh, at this ball. Uh, I'm pretty sure that there are some geometers in the room, but if I take somebody at random, you, for example, <laughs> how many black pieces on this ball? You can see six. <laughs> you are cheating. You can see six, and the other side you could expect six others. Maybe. Yeah, twelve. This is the good. Let's see. It's twelve. How many white pieces? Aha! Uh -huh. More complicated. So you see that the, the black pieces are pentagons. They have five sides. And the white pieces are hexagons with six sides. OK? OK, let me show you something. Uh, a few months ago, I was with a group of uh, children from uh, six years old to 12 years old. And I put a Telstar in the middle of the room. You could see it. And each one has a paper and pencil. And I said to them, you have plenty of time. Please draw me a picture. Draw me what you see. They had the ball in front of them. And they were asked to draw the, the, the ball. And you see the result. Some of them are quite good. On the uh, upper right side, the lower left right is uh, <laughs> needs uh, abstract art. Yeah. Uh, I would recommend a psychanalyst. <laughs> <laughs> and you see that even if you have the ball in front of you, the ball is complicated. It's not easy to draw it. And I will not test with you, but I'm pretty sure that if I ask you now to draw the ball, even with the ball in front of you, uh, it might be uh, a challenge. Um, I think these pictures are interesting. Here's another picture. This is in, uh, in England. This is uh, uh, the sign in uh, England showing uh, uh, um, the direction for a soccer stadium. You see that this picture is ridiculous. Because, do you see why? There's no pentagon. 
This is the official English uh, <laughs> sign in the roads. There is no Pentagon, so this is completely wrong. It turns out that uh, a group of um, mathematicians complained, uh, uh, and they had, uh, how do you call that, uh, petition, petition? Uh, 25,000 English people sent a petition to the English government, and the answer is uh, terrible. I mean, the English government answered that the role of a sign is not to teach geometry. <laughs> well, we don't like the English, huh? <laughs> okay. Anyway, so this again shows you that to draw the correct picture of a tail star is not obvious at all. Here's another picture. This is the official sign for the Champions League. This picture is totally wrong. You see, some of the black, uh, or some of the white region are, had, have uh, uh, four neighboring uh, stars, and some have three only. So this ball is a complete nonsense. And nevertheless, this is the official sign for the Champions League. So once again, drawing a, 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 a soccer ball is not easy. It's full, it's complicated. Another one? Nonsense. Only hexagons. So all mathematicians know that it's not possible to tile a sphere with hexagons. At some moment, you have to use pentagons or, or, or polygons with less than six sides. So this is again, I remember well, recently when there was the World Cup, at least in Paris, there was on the, on the cafes, on the, uh, there was, a, uh, you can come to my cafe, cafe and you will attend the, the matches, the, the, and um, you could see this kind of picture everywhere. So geometry is not present in the general public. Okay, let's have a look again at this tail star. You see that each white hexagon is surrounded by three black pentagons. Ah, this is a tail star which has been designed in 1507, I think, by Leonardo da, 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 da Vinci. You see that this structure of the, or the foot of the, of the soccer ball is very, very old and has been designed a long time ago uh, in a book by uh, Luca Pacioli, a wonderful book, I love this book. It's a book in which he draws pictures, the book of pictures. Among the pictures, uh, you have uh, the pictures for the letters of the alphabet, A, B, C, D, how to draw beautiful letter, how to draw the letter A, for example, the letter S. You have a compass, you have a ruler, how you draw a beautiful S. Uh, this is the purpose of this book. And at the end of the book, you have hundreds, not hundreds, dozens of pictures like this. Historians believe that uh, Leonardo da Vinci began by constructing these objects in wood and then drew the picture because he was a good drawer. He could draw uh, things. So that I wanted to tell you that the soccer ball has not, in, be in, has not been invented by, uh, by Adidas. It has been invented by Leonardo da Vinci, but even earlier, here's a picture of the uh, solid uh, plateau solids. So you see all the objects you can create using uh, uh, regular pentagons. On the left, you have four regular triangles, equilateral triangles. You create a tetrahedron. Then you have the easy cube. Then you have the octahedron with eight faces. And then you have the dodecahedron with 12 pentagons. And then you have the icosahedron with 20 triangles. And these uh, five objects were very fundamental in the, 
in the writing of Plato, you know, symbolic of the elements in nature. Uh, and um, uh, how do you connect that with, uh, with the fucker ball? Well, the answer is simple. Uh, it's due not to Plato, but to uh, Archimedes. Archimedes realized that Plato was trying to understand all the solids that you can create using polygons, which are all the same. You have all triangles, or all squares, all triangles, all pentagons. But Archimedes said, maybe I could use several kinds of shapes and create a polyhedron, which has several kinds of polygons. And indeed, he realized that you can create, for example, let me show you, you can create many new objects, including the Telstar. Look at that. So this is a, our good friend, the virus, which is obviously a, a, a polyhedron uh, with uh, uh, triangular faces. And let me show you this. This is an icosahedron from Plato with 20 faces, uh, 12 vertices. Now you take a knife and you cut slightly the vertices. So you get an object with 20 green polygons and 12 small pentagons. And then you cut them deeper to get bigger pentagons. And you go deeper and you get the Telstar. So the Telstar is nothing more than the icosahedron for which you have cut the 12 uh, uh, vertices in 12 pentagons. Um, so this is why the soccer ball is nothing more than a truncated icosahedron. Now, you see on the left the truncated icosahedron, and on the right you see a picture of the actual soccer ball. You see that if you want to go from the left to the right, you have to inflate the ball, and you have to use um, texture which is uh, deformable, is not so good. And then you can ask yourself, is the truncated icosahedron really spherical? Can you improve the sphericity of the ball? And actually, uh, if you want to create a beautiful spherical telstar, maybe it's not a good idea to truncate the vertices in order to, pro to produce the regular pentagons. Maybe you should stop just a little bit better to have, think to have something which is a bit rounder. And this computation has been done by the engineers from Adidas. And if you have a soccer ball in your hand soon, you can measure the pentagons and you will see that they are not regular. They're almost regular, but there's a slight difference between the length of, 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 the, of, of the size of the, of the pentagon in order to make it more spherical. So this is uh, the bad point with the Telstar, but that you, you need to inflate it you, to make it rounder. Now, the good point of the Telstar, uh, he's the champion. The, icosahedron and the uh, truncated icosahedron is the object in nature which has the highest possible symmetries. If you take a ball and you can rotate it many times, and I wrote here, you can do that in 120 ways. There are 120 different ways of rotating your ball and finding the same ball. For example, on the left you see the pentagon. You can imagine that if you give a rotation by one-fifth of a turn, you get the same picture. So you have a symmetry of order five. On the right, 
you see that if you give a rotation of one third of a full turn, you get the same ball. So you see you can play many different rotations on this ball, and the result is that you get the same ball. You have 120 symmetry. We know today that no other object has more symmetries. So this is why the Telstar is the best. It is the highest symmetrical object you can imagine. Now, Archimedes did not only construct the, the, the Telstar, he tried to find all possible objects with faces which are polygons, not necessarily hexagons and pentagons, and he found 13 examples. So there are 13 examples of polyhedron with uh, polygons which are not necessarily pentagons or hexagons. And the good point is that all these 13 have been used by Adidas for balls. And uh, uh, Adidas did not mention the, the source. It's a shame. Okay, here's a molecule which is the, called the football lane, which has been invented by chemists 35 years ago. And uh, this is a creation, and this is a creation by totally uh, new uh, object, which is very useful in chemistry because you can put inside it a, a, a drug. Uh, and so it's a way to, to protect a, a, a medicine inside a cage. This is, uh, you can see, this, I think it's a, it's a beautiful object. And what's amazing is that the chemists who did that were not aware of uh, Adidas. Okay, let's go to Brazil. So Brazuca has a very wonderful feature. Uh, you don't have to inflate it. It's very round. It does not have the corners. Like the the like the the Telstar, it is almost immediately it's almost round. Let me show you that. I was in Brazil when it was uh, presented on television, the new ball for the World Cup in uh, Rio de Janeiro. And then when I was looking at this uh, at this uh, ball, and uh, my my wife was next to me. And when I saw this ball, I said to my wife, well, wow, this is a cube. And my wife thought I was crazy, which is kind of true, but I want to convince you that this ball is indeed a cube. Let me explain that. You will see, you will agree with me in a few minutes. Look at that. First of all, it's beautiful, no problem. You can see, uh, uh, I cannot ask you how many, how many pieces do you see. You see here, it, uh, there is some kind of triple point. There is a point where three pieces arrive. And then I show you that. Can you, you see this kind of white cross with, uh, can you imagine how many crosses there are on the board? It's more complicated, huh? Six. Ah, six. Like the six faces of a cube. So what I claim is that these six crosses are attached exactly like the six squares making a cube. So let me have a better look at that. This is a square. Well, it's a kind of a strange square. You see four yellow dots. If you connect them by the dotted line, you get a square, usual square. But if you connect them, instead of connecting them by a straight line, if you connect them by this curvy line, you get this domain, this white domain. And this white domain has three, has four corners. It's like a square, except that the sides, instead of being straight lines, are S-curves, like sinus curves. 
Now the idea is this. You take, I did that, and you can do it yourself. I did that with kids. You cut six copies of that in paper. You cut and you have these six crosses, or this, uh, these six uh, objects. And then you do exactly like you used to do in primary school when you wanted to construct a cube. You glue six of them with the exact same pattern as in a cube, like this one. It's six copies, and you glue them, and you have that. And when you glue that, you see that the crosses will kind of curve, and at the end, in the end, you get all, at the end, you get the bazooka. So the brazooka is exactly the same as a cube, except that the faces are not usual squares. They are curved squares with curved sides. And I can tell you, uh, when, when you do that with paper, I like to do that. When you do that, you glue the six faces, and kind of automatically, the thing takes the shape of a sphere. It's not exactly a sphere cannot be exactly a sphere, because the, 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 when the, the, the squares are kind of folded, they are, called, they are what mathematicians call a developable surface. But nevertheless, at the end, without inflating anything, they are almost spherical. It's a great idea from the engineers. So I was right to say it's, it is a, it is a, a cube. You agree? It's a cube. Now, the fact that it's a cube is good, but it's better than the it, it's better than the uh, Telstar because it's rounder. You don't have to you to to inflate it, but it's not as good as the Telstar because the number of symmetries is equal to the number of symmetries of a cube, which is quite big, but not as big as 120. But nevertheless, it is a cube. This is, this is uh, uh, the creation of a friend of mine, which is a very famous artist, another artist, not the same one. It's called, uh, he's called uh, Fabrice Hibert. Uh, he has an exhibition now in uh, Fondation Cartier in Paris. He creates uh, objects like this one. Uh, he calls that the ballon carré. So I criticize him strongly. First of all, because uh, the black uh, objects are hexagons and should not. And uh, second of all, because he should not say carré, but cubic. Shame on him. So he organized a, a, a game with this, uh, with this uh, ball. Well, can you call a ball? Okay, now let me go to the, to the last. Uh, soccer ball, the goal from uh, uh, Qatar. Uh, it was harder for me to understand its structure because uh, you don't find anything uh, on, on the web explaining the dimension and uh, the shape uh, of this. And uh, uh, unfortunately, Adidas did not answer any of my emails. <laughs> and uh, they want to keep secret. And uh, so here's the, the ball. I think it's pretty it's beautiful. It contains uh, shapes. Uh, you can see it has triangular shapes, 12 of them, Ex sorry, eight of them. And these um, strange four side shapes uh, that I call kites, because it looks like a kite. And there are, there are 12 of them. And the question is, what, what is this shape? Where does it come from? Well, I try to convince you that this is, again, a cube. Let's have a look. You see, each triangle is surrounded by, four, by three kites rotating in one direction. And uh, it, doesn't so, it doesn't look so regular, but it is. 
It is called in mathematics an icosidodecahedron. I'm very proud of this picture. I did it myself. It was hard for me, but I did it. And let me show you several aspects of it. You can see some of the symmetries. Oh, not yet. The idea is that you take a cube. A cube has eight vertices. You slide, you, you, you cut the eight vertices to create eight triangles. These are the eight yellow triangles. And in the, in the, in the rest, you have 12 pieces that you can adapt to have this shape. I have no idea if the engineers of uh, Adidas have read or not uh, the, the collected papers of Archimedes. But uh, anyway, this is beautiful. Uh, uh, players did not like it. At the end of my talk, I will make some comments of how players liked or disliked these balls because they are not the same. They do not behave in the same way when you, when you play the game. And I will explain that to you now. Now let me abandon mathematics for a moment and let's go to physics. The question is, if you have a ball moving in the air, of course there is a friction and the reaction of the air on the ball. And the question is, uh, what is the total reaction? What is the force? which is acting on the ball when, when the ball is flying. This is an old question, much before the invention of, uh, of soccer. And I want to mention the work of uh, D'Alembert. D'Alembert uh, is one of the first who tried to understand uh, aerodynamics, or hydrodynamics. And he wrote a paper, a very interesting paper, totally wrong, but he, was the, he knew that the paper was wrong. So his paper deals with the motion of an object in the air. He has uh, formulas for, for computing the action of the air on, on every single point, and then he could compute the total reaction of the air by taking the sum of the, all these forces. And it's a long paper. He makes the sum that we call integral. He makes the integral of all these forces, and the result is zero. <laughs> so he understood that there is no action of the air on the single object moving in the air. Since uh, uh, D'Alembert was uh, not only a mathematician, he had seen birds flying in the air. He said that the end of the paper is wonderful. He said, uh, therefore, I prove that the birds do not exist. <laughs> and uh, he said, uh, my paper is correct. <laughs> and then he understood perfectly the problem. The problem is that any kind of mathematics, you have a distinction between the mathematical problem and the modelization of the problem. How do you understand forces in the air? And uh, he did not understand where was the lack of understanding of aerodynamics. And the last sentence of his paper is, uh, future scientists will understand where is the mistake, not in the mathematics, but in the physics. And the mistake was viscosity. We know today that uh, force is the drag and the importance and the explanation of the possibility for a bird to fly or for, for a, a plane to fly come only from the existence of viscosity of the air. Without viscosity, D'Alembert showed us no birds, no, no planes. And then it was the beginning of a very fascinating part of the history of physics and mathematics. I will show you a few examples. This is uh, the contribution of Eiffel, Eiffel from the Eiffel Tower. Uh, Eiffel built his uh, tower in 1880, 
five or something. And after the construction of this tower, uh, many people wanted to destroy this tower and uh, uh, Gustave Eiffel wanted to keep it. So he said, what can I do with this tower? Can I do something useful with my Eiffel Tower? And uh, he had the idea of making ex first experiments about aerodynamics. This is the very beginning of the history of uh, planes. Many people were not believing that uh, a plane could exist. And then he had the idea of throwing balls from the second floor of the Eiffel Tower, taking pictures of the, mo of the, of the motion of the ball and trying to understand the reaction of the air on, on, on the ball. He did that during several years, taking many pictures, many experiments, and then he realized, very good idea, that instead of throwing a ball from the second floor of the, of the Eiffel Tower, which is not easy to do, uh, it would be much easier to have a ball which is fixed and to throw the air on the ball. And you have here the first uh, experiment of, uh, uh, of, of, of Eiffel. You have a ball which is uh, 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 suspended on two wires. And you see a fan throwing air. And of course, the ball will uh, change position. And you can measure the angle. Uh, and then you can measure the reaction of the air as a function of the velocity of the air. And as a function of the shape of the object, like a big, big ball, a small ball, etc., etc. And then he made a lot of uh, experiments. And he discovered a phenomenon, which is called the Eiffel paradox, or the drag paradox, which is very strange. And actually, he did many times the same experiment before publishing the result because he could not believe himself in his result. If you increase the velocity of the air, you would believe that you would increase the force of reaction. And indeed, uh, probably many of you have uh, followed physics courses when you see the reaction of the air is proportional to the square of the velocity. This is true for small velocity. The, the, the force is proportional to the square of the, of the velocity. But what uh, 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 Eiffel observed is that if you look at the force as a function of velocity, it starts like a square. And at a very specific moment, very precise moment, suddenly the force drops by a factor of four. So all of a sudden, there is no more reaction of the air on the ball. It vanishes, basically. The force goes down by a factor of four. And he could not believe that. And this is true. And then he made many experiments and trying to measure this velocity where the crisis, he called that the crisis. This is a precise moment there is the crisis. And this crisis appears at a very specific moment depending on the, the diameter of the ball and also depending on the texture of the ball. And he's the first to have observed that a very smooth ball is not good for that. The crisis arrives much later. And that was very important for him because he wanted to build airplanes. And this crisis is, uh, is not so good. So what's the relationship with soccer? Well, if you kick a soccer ball, it starts at some velocity, and then the velocity will decrease. At the beginning, it's very, going very, very, very quickly. So by what I told you, the reaction, the force, the drag, is small. Velocity, the velocity diminishes little by little. And at some moment, all of a sudden, because the velocity is going down, the force goes up by a factor of four. And if you look carefully with the camera at the motion of a soccer ball, and all goalkeepers know that, 
the trajectory of the ball is at the beginning very smooth. And when you reach the crisis velocity, all of a sudden the trajectory is broken, changes direction. Very important for the, for the goalkeepers. You are looking for the ball and the ball is going with a smooth trajectory and all of a sudden it changes direction because of this crisis. Now, this is very important to know when this crisis will happen. And this crisis, people did not know. Uh, in, uh, the, the, uh, Adidas did not know in, in, in 70. It turns out that if you want to have a crisis at a good velocity, it's good to have a ball which is not too smooth. And indeed, the soccer, the, the, the Telstar is not really smooth because you have all these pieces with a lot of the boundaries and you have to sew all of these places and it's not very smooth. And the, 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 leather, the leather is not very smooth. And so the, the, the Telstar is a good ball from that point of view. But the other balls, which have been created later, have to be rough. Here's a, a golf ball. You all know that these golf balls have these little uh, shapes on the boundary. By the way, you see that they are not all hexagons. Huh? If you look carefully, most of them are hexagons. And from time to time, you see a pentagon. Hmm? They have to exist somewhere. Hmm? Nevertheless, we know, today, we know today that if you want a good ball, it has to be rough. And if you look at the ball of uh, the bazooka, for example, you can see that on the surface of the ball, you have all these uh, little dots that make it rough because of that. And they didn't know it for this uh, Jabulani. Jabulani ball, uh, which is in uh, South Africa, goal, uh, uh, players hated, hated this ball. Because this ball is too smooth and had a completely random trajectory. Because of that, and um, uh, I collected a few of the statements of uh, famous goalkeepers uh, uh, about this ball. Somebody said, uh, somebody said, the guy who created this ball never played soccer. Because indeed, it, it seems that if you play soccer with this ball, immediately you see that when you kick a ball like that, it goes in a trajectory which is not what you want it to do. It's going randomly. So uh, uh, you hate that ball. And this is my own creation. <laughs> this is my proposal for <clears throat> the next World Cup. I hope you like it. You see these, uh, these um, shapes. Uh, you can see some have uh, five arms and some have six arms. And uh, you can uh, glue them just like you did with the brazooka. Uh, you have 12, uh, 12 uh, with five arms and uh, 20 with six arms, and you glue them. And if you do that in paper, you have a beautiful ball that I recommend for the next World Cup. I sent that to, to Adidas. No answer. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you agree with me that this is a beautiful ball. <laughs> Thank you very much. So this is Copernic, uh, the, the book of Copernic on, uh, on, the, uh, on the Copernican system begins with a very beautiful chapter on the perfection of the sphere. And he says that sphere has been created by God because it's the most beautiful object, the most symmetrical objects. And when you read uh, the, the book of Copernic, you see that he would have loved to play soccer. Okay, if I may say some joke, uh, 
I am very upset by the fact that you did not mention Messi. <laughs> and and you, you, show, you showed us second class players. <laughs> I, I read on the, in the newspaper today that he was almost expelled from uh, Paris well, Saint Germain. Well, that's a good sign, of course. Ah, oh, la la. I mean, good players. <laughs> Good players cannot play in second class. <laughs> okay. okay then my, Was it a question? <laughs> my question is as a, as a soccer player and also as a mathematician. No, it's also only the aspect of Spain. Yeah, yes, yes, yes. I yes, mean, yes. when, well, you know, if you yeah, yes. have I, you ever played soccer, you yeah, yeah. Play, right? No, 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 I never played soccer. But I, I know this uh, spinning question. Spinning uh, question is maybe, I think, is the most interesting part in the... Of the physics. Let, let me tell you, uh, today I selected a few topics. Uh, I wrote a little book on the soccer ball. And in this little book, there's a chapter on what you mentioned. Ah, you, wrote, you wrote a book about... Uh, yes, yes. I wrote a, a, a little book on this question. And one chapter is concerned with what you mentioned, the spinning question. And in particular, this uh, historical goal by... Uh, in Lyon, actually, uh, where the by 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 Beckham, uh, who David Beckham? No, 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 no. I will tell you now. It is incredible. The Borgs follow the trajectory, uh, ah. but there is also a story to go by David Beckham. Well, doesn't matter. I will look at it. No, no, let me find it. <laughs> this is a, a trajectory which is unbelievable. Uh, this, this can be seen on YouTube, right? Yeah. Yeah. So it's my book. Okay. Let me tell you. <laughs> Let me tell you. Uh, no, 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 no. Roberto Carlos. Oh. You cannot say this name here. <laughs> <laughs> this is Roberto Carlos in 1997. Uh, and uh, Martez was a, as a goalkeeper, and he said, look, uh, uh, this is the kind of thing we can only admire and applaud. Some goals will remain for eternity. I agree. Some, <laughs> some will remain. I agree. But you're right. Uh, uh, let me tell you the truth. Uh, when I, I wrote this book, which contains many other things, basically I wanted to write something about mathematics, geometry. And uh, my wife said, well, you should also say something about physics. So I added a few chapters on what you mentioned, the spinning question, the drug crisis, and all these questions. But you're right. Messi, I don't know. Then uh, an another thing that just by curiosity, I'm I apologize for my ignorance. In the Telstar ball, player, ball soccer, is the position of the diamond and the diamond unique? Yeah, yeah. Uh, there is a, I mean, the position of the center, yeah. yeah. This uh, up to rotation, of course. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. The, yes, this is, a, this is a theorem. I mean, the, this is the group of symmetries of, uh, of the 120 uh, symmetries is actually isomorphic to the alternating groups on five objects. So uh, you let it act on the Euclidean sphere, Euclidean space, and this is the set of axes, no choice. There is only one possibility. And then uh, also, uh, as, you, as you mentioned, this procedure, if you start from, from the equation instead and you cut the vertices. Yeah. You also obtain some other... Yes, you get the... Um, you get the Jabulani. Yeah. Well, the, the Jabulani, by the way, that was in South Africa. Yeah. And that was the reason why Spain won. The <laughs> 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 I agree. Anyway, uh, all regular polygons, uh, all regular polyhedrons have led to at least one soccer ball in, in one way or another. The last one is, is, is the same, is the Telstar. Yeah, it's the Telstar. It's exactly, oh, this is the Kepler. 
Yeah, this is the tail star. This is the same. If you take the, the center of each uh, spider, you get exactly, if you take the center of these objects, you get, the only difference is that in the tail star, the connecting sides are, are straight lines. Here, that is S-shaped. As I told you, in, you don't have to inflate it. It's automatically spherical. Yes, yes, you have to be clever to find the right curve. This is, a, a, this is a intrinsic uh, uh, surface geometry. This is a theorems of Kol um, Kargapelov Kolmogorov. Intrinsic geometry of convex surfaces. Yes. Can you go back to one of your slides with this uh, cubic ball? Oh, the cubic uh, ball of yeah, this? this elation that you had. Uh, one before. You have the tessellation, like, no, 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 I mean. Uh, before. The, 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 the ah, the cubic. Yeah, so you have some kind of facial tessellation, but again, before. So when you were proving, yeah, this one. So you see that uh, what you were explaining to us, you convinced that it's a cube, yeah, with a tessellation like H, and you're just cutting the piece below, cutting above. What is the objective? Because on the one hand side, you said, yes, you want it to be smoother, and this is why you selected the curves. But on the other hand, we have opposite objective, not to be smooth. So what is the objective? Like, for example, if we want to have optimal, kind of optimal, I don't know what, what it means in football sense, ball, what the objective of these uh, Well, first of, you're right. First of all, if you, get, if you look at the official rules of soccer, you see that a, a ball has to be spherical, which is not exactly true. It seems that the official rules of the international uh, FIFA huh, is that a ball will be rejected if it is, so, if it is, if it is spherical with a, an error which is bigger than 1.5%. So a ball to be accepted by the international community of soccer players has to be co contained, uh, circumscribed and and inscribed in two spheres whose radii are equal up to 1.5%. 1 1 Otherwise, no way rejected. If you take the, the truncated icosahedron, it's totally bad, it's 8%. So you have to inflate it to get it better. But these balls are rounder almost immediately by 1%. So that's the first answer even if you don't inflate it at all. The second answer is that aesthetics. You know, all these people, all these uh, uh, Adidas, etc., they are making money, they are they're communicating, they are, this is, uh, this is, uh, this is, uh, this is not only sport. Uh, you have to be, you have to create new objects which satisfy the players and not only the players, but also the spectators. So they want to do something beautiful. And they want to do something new. So the answer, one of the answers is that I believe that this ball is beautiful. That may be an answer. Okay. But maybe the tessellation is not the, the optimal in terms of what they did. Yeah, no. You mean the shape of the curve? Yeah. Uh, because uh, there are many. No, no. No, no, it's not optimum. Uh, the point is that, so let me tell you another story, which is not related to the, to the soccer ball, but uh, I have no idea if this is related or not. Uh, uh, the great mathematician William Thurston, who passed away 10 years ago, maybe now, yeah, at the end of his life, was very much interested in the cutting cloth, how to uh, uh, draw a piece of cloth that you can adapt to, to the body. And he did uh, exercises, and as a good mathematician, 
is started by, let's assume that the body is a sphere. <laughs> <laughs> and, he's, and he tried to find uh, 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 shapes of cloth that could uh, easily be applied on a sphere with a, as good as possible mistake. And uh, he uh, uh, published a paper, his last paper, maybe you've seen it, the very last paper of Thurston, with pictures, no proof, just pictures. And he has a picture which is similar to that. He, I, I think he was not aware, actually it was just before the same time, he was not aware of this question. And instead of having these uh, S shapes like that, he had a very, very, very uh, wiggly curve. Very much complicated, very complicated, probably too complicated for, for, for soccer. Uh, because soccer can, has to be simple, not too complicated. Uh, it had a very complicated uh, uh, shape, which is better producing a ball. I did it myself too. It's a, very, it's a beautiful ball in paper. Uh, 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 a few years ago, I was in Japan. Japanese uh, uh, teenagers love to do that. Uh, we had um, a, a workshop. Uh, they, they cut uh, many pieces and they glue with uh, uh, adhesive tape, etc., etc. And the shape of Thurston is rounder than this one. But, uh, you know, engineers are not mathematicians. They have different problems. It has to be beautiful. It should not be expensive. It should be uh, in many, many different questions. Thank you. I'm, I'm ready to pass microphone, only one comment that you see some of your shapes are not convex and some convex, no, but you... No, they're all convex, I think. I mean that when they make the ball, it's not really convex. Which one? I mean, any, any of your physical balls are not convex. They are convex, no? Which one is not convex? I mean that abstractly they are convex, but physically, when they make this... No, no. They uh, make it uh, convex. I, th I think brazooka is very convex. This is maybe the ultimate. Yeah, I think uh, brazooka is convex. Yes. Uh, you know, I, uh, I may agree with you, but uh, you know, I am not engineer. But you are, you're right. You're right. But for it's yeah. yeah. You, you mentioned viscosity of the air mm -hmm. as, as a reason behind the behavior of the ball. I had an idea which maybe is wrong, but I thought that, uh, or I heard that in fact, that the, the, the main difference between a, a golf ball and, and, and a plain wing is that they have an opposite purpose. So a plain wing tries to, to minimize turbulence and a golf ball yeah. tries to maximize turbulence. Uh, I don't know if this is true and whether uh, there's something this is similar true. with your football uh, ball. Everything you explained what was called the Reynolds number and the Reynolds number which tells you basically when turbulence is appearing, and this uh, Reynolds number depends on the diameter. And I think you know that the golf ball is smaller than the soccer ball. And uh, uh, so turbulence is, uh, is going much later uh, on, a soccer, on, a, on a golf ball. And even much later because of these uh, shapes on the surface of the soccer ball. Maybe I should write a, a book on other balls. <laughs> Okay, more questions or comments? Yes? Yeah. I don't know. Uh, it's, it's possible to think about playing with these, uh, I mean, uh, geometrical aspects for the case of rugby balls? Ah. Rugby balls? Mm -hmm. I mean, could, could bring us some advantages if, if you can start to try to join different different figures on a rugby ball, or this is much more complex or much more simple and you have to, to use the uh, one, usual one, ones. One of the problems of rugby balls is that they're not spherical but uh, ellipsoidals. But notice something that uh, the ellipsoid is, has some symmetry because the ellipsoid of a, of a rugby ball has two axes which are equal. If you take a, a, a rugby ball, it has a long axis, but if you slice it by the middle, you get a circle. <laughs> so why not inventing today a new sport with a ball with three different axes? 
So you have a long axis, and when you cut by the middle, you get another ellipse with a long and a short axis. It would be very, uh, uh, it would be closer to another shape that I like. I might write a book on these shapes. The shape of pebbles on the seaside. Pebbles are, have di three different sides. So that's a good idea, but uh, understanding uh, uh, the shape of, uh, of, of a rugby ball might be interesting, and the aerodynamics of a, a rugby ball is probably much more complicated, I think. Mm -hmm. I think. Okay. <laughs> totally random. Hmm? More questions or comments? Well, I have a question. What what do the football balls look like before test? Oh, uh, I have pictures here too. Um, ugly. There, there, there was no... No, typically uh, they, they were basically like the... You know, you take a cube. I'm, you like that. I'm sure you like that. Take a cube okay. with six faces and you slide each, each uh, face in two rectangles. You get 12 rectangles. The standard ball before Telstar was like that. So you had to, uh, but then you had to inflate the ball very strongly. But now, uh, as you are a topologist, and I'm pretty sure you understand that these 12 rectangles actually are 12 pentagons. Because they have been a new additional. And if you deform it, you get a icosahedron. You get a dodecagon. A dodecagon. Okay. So, so this is the same, uh, this is the same shape. Yeah. So, so the, the truth is that uh, the shape of the balls before 1970, not beautiful. Okay. So if there are no more questions, we thank Etienne again. Thank you.